Hey, this is Anthony with Revzilla TV, and in this video, we're going to give a first look of the 2011 Climb Latitude Jacket and Pant Gore-Tex Performance Shell Adventure Touring Crossover Motorcycle and Dirt Bike Combo. Basically, what, tour, what Climb did was they looked at their lineup and they realized a lot of folks in that $500, $600 jacket range were really looking towards something like the Traverse, which is a true enduro outfit, and they were stretching it into street riding use. So what Climb has done is, is, is it has come out with the Latitude, and again, it's gonna start shipping somewhere in the fall of 2011. This is our first look. This is kind of a still a little bit prototypey here, so some subtleties might change. What they've done is come up with an outfit that's a little bit more dirt bike and motorcycle oriented for true crossover all season riding. And it's not as technical as the Badlands Pro, which is in a hardcore off-road oriented um, style as well as functionality. So with the Latitude, you have Gore Performance Shell. What that means is a two-ply system. You have Invista Cordura 840D throughout. It's going to be reinforced on the impact areas. And then behind that bonded, you're going to have the Gore-Tex Performance Shell. And what that means is it's waterproof, it's breathable, it's guaranteed for life. Gore-Tex has a level of specificity in the engineering process, so you know it's high quality and it's guaranteed forever. Throughout the entire garment, you're going to have CE rated armor in elbows, shoulders, knees, as well as hips, and it does come with a back pad. Now, if you look at this, it's really set up for more road-oriented or road-oriented riding. Freddie here is enormous compared to me. He's six foot five, 200 pounds on the dot, 44 inch chest. He's kind of a tall and lanky average build. He's wearing a size large and a size 34 in the pants. I actually, because of my build, I wear a 44 or I wear a large in the jacket as well, but normally for my height, if I wasn't as broad, I'd be about a medium. Now, if we look at it and break it down from the top down, you're going to see they have this retro reflective, which is 3M's new style reflective. You have a good amount of pockets here. These are weatherproof pockets, but I'm not going to consider them dry pockets because with the Gore-Tex behind it, if you're really sweating a lot, what could happen is your perspiration could evaporate out through the coat. Again, with 9 billion pores per square inch, the beauty of Gore-Tex is it allows you to breathe. It, doesn't, it creates a, a microclimate within the jacket and allows your perspiration and water vapor to escape versus getting caught up inside of it. If we talk about venting for the summertime weather riding, you're going to have two here on the arms. You're going to have, I'm going to open this guy up. You're going to have a full pit zip here, which is a water resistant zipper. It's mesh backed. Turn backwards for me. And you're also going to have a full back exhaust vent here. Here's your Venturi that's going to suck the air out through it as well. And you can get a good view of the back while we have him turned around. Notice we have a cinch at the collar to guard you in the wintertime riding conditions. You have good reflective. You have a climb logo on the back. It's subtlety here, but it's really well done. Turn back forward for me, Freddie. If we continue to think about the weatherproofness aspect of it, I want to speak a little bit to the guts. This is a technical outer shell. This is meant for the rider that's okay with a modular or component-based system that either has heated gear or he has his own mid and base layer. Now, Climb offers base layers, they offer mid layers, and really it's up to the rider and the type of temperature range you're riding in to decide what fits under that. But the cut of this, with nothing inside of it, is meant to be beefed up or pared down depending on the riding style, depending on the time of the year. Turn that way for me. I want you to lift your arm. Another thing's the cinching on this guy. Notice Freddie's build. He's kind of this average build at 5'6'5". Five, five. He's a huge dude. But this fits him. We've cinched it in on the side. You have a good amount of cinching. And you also have these snaps that lead way to a zippered gusset which allows you an expansion panel. And what this expansion panel really does is when you're in the upright position, really this, this jacket's meant for long distance adventure touring as well as the light enduro or off-road riding. When you have the ability to open up this gusset, not only does it give you more room depending on how your hips are shaped, but it also allows this jacket not to bench up, bunch up and get pushed into your chin. If you've ever had on a leather, that was, this is where I find, where people find a leather that's one size too big, you're on the bike and it's hitting you under the chin. With a textile, even in the upright position, this can happen if you don't have the ability for a gusset down here. So I'm gonna snap that guy. YKK zippers throughout, everything's safety stitched, the gore, gore level of engineer comes into play here. So turn back and face forward for me. I do want to point something out we know is prototype right now. There are two pockets, one on each side of his hip. They're hand pockets at the top of the pants. They're going away. There will be no pockets for your hands on these pants. What we're going to have is a pocket across the top of the leg. And I want you to turn that way for me. I want to show the zip here on the side. You're going to have a full length side zip here, which is going to vent to the pant. And then on the back of the pant, you're going to have an exhaust zip. So really right there you can see 
I have an entry and an exit for, for a good amount of airflow, both with water resistant zippers. And on the front, to pass the on road testing, you're going to have a storm flap that covers that as well. As we go down the pant, you're going to notice that we have knee armor. Actually, the prototype here doesn't have any CE armor, it's not in, but the pockets are going to be, it's going to come with CE armor that's got a full inch of adjustability, both up and down. And then you notice the stitching and the extra impact resistance that we have all the way down. Turn backwards for me, I want to show the back of the cuff of the leg. If we look here, you're going to have reflective piping, you're going to have a snap system, and then you're going to have a gusset that comes up and is backed with a Stormfly by Gore-Tex to make sure it's compliant in the uh, Gore on-road testing. And this is going to be plenty of room with three snaps here to get it over. Right now, he's wearing a pair of CD Adventure rain boots, but this will accommodate a serious off-road boot as well if you want to stretch this and go into the off-road realm with it. You turn back around for me. Last thing I want to go over is the collar system up here. Notice that it's going to have a full rain gutter that goes all the way down. And what the rain gutter does is it provides this extra flap that goes over the YKK zipper. Zippers, no matter who makes them, are weak points for water unless they're a scuba style zipper, but they're really expensive and tough to use. So what they do in the motorcycle world, even with the Gore-Tex, is they create a storm fly or storm rain gutter that goes over top of it. It's a double flap system and it keeps the rain away. And if we come all the way down here, you're going to notice a tricot fleece liner, which is really, really comfortable. You have loops for your iPod here to come up to keep things in place. And then on both sides, you also have this fleece zipper garage. So it's going to be wicking, it's going to be very soft, it's a micro fleece, it goes around your neck, and it's going to keep you cool and keep you comfortable. So now that we've gotten the latitude off of Freddy, I want to show you a couple other pieces before we open it up and get into the pants. The first one I neglected to mention when he had it on are these neoprene or nylon storm cuffs that are in the end of each sleeve. They're going to keep wind from going up your wrist in the colder times of the year. Moving over to the left side, we have this pocket. This is a nice nuance. This is called the personal stat pocket. Climb's actually going to be coming out with a program later in the year that you can get your personalized stats on a card and actually register your jacket. Neat program. They'll release more information when they're ready. Basically, you have this pocket here. This symbol is the International Medical Attention or Information Symbol. So what it does is if you're out exploring in the sky in any country, whether it's an Edelweiss tour, your own tour through Europe, or here in the States, an EMT of any nationality is going to go right for that pocket to get your personal stats and medical information that would live inside there. Moving on from there, I'm going to open this bad boy up. A couple different nuances in the inside. Notice it's a full mesh mesh lining here. Notice the pocket configuration with the setup for earbuds that could come out of here, an iPod pocket, and we have some cargo space. We have a secret pocket down here along the bottom, right around your waist. I always call that the passport pocket, you know, especially if you're doing some adventuring in other cu cultures. Nothing's worse than when you're getting shaken down at the border. You want to have a safe spot to put either valuables or your passport. And then also notice here the cutout. Here's going to be your included CE back pad, as well as here's a pocket for one of the, uh, the shoulder pads. And remember, I did mention that the CE elbow pads are adjustable along with the straps, the tensioners on each forearm. Now I'm going to move into the pants. Some of the nuances on the pants as I pull them over. You're going to notice that we have leather on the inside of the knee and calf. This knee box is big enough for knee protection, an off-road style protector, and this is going to be a heat shield as well as extra grip against the bike and abrasion resistance against the bike. So this is a high use area. You have to think about when you're standing on the pegs, you're spending so much time, you know, you're transferring your weight, you're using your legs to steer as much as you are the rest of your body weight. Moving up from there, I mentioned this pocket. I want to talk about the pockets as a whole. They are weatherproof, but if you sweat a lot in this, the perspiration could come out from the inside out. And actually, if you ever find that any of your pockets have any moisture in them, it's probably from your own sweat coming out through the Gore-Tex membrane. As we open this guy up, notice Gore-Tex back storm fly here to keep any pulled water on your waist, especially if you're sitting in the upright touring position out of your pants. Zippers are always a weak point. We have the brushed fleece liner, which has a nice feel to it and it's going to be very soft against your skin. So in the wintertime, you might have a pair of tech underwear or long johns or something longer underneath this. In the summertime, you might just be in a pair of skivvies. So what you want is any part that's going to come in contact with your body to have this nice fleece lining to it. They call this the brushed, brushed mesh liner. Loops for suspenders around the yoke on the front of the waistband as well. Single cuff adjusters on either side for adjustability around the waist. And then I already spoke to these huge vents on the sides of these guys and there's going to be CE rated hip armor as well. Last thing is the size of the cuff at the bottom. I talked about major off-road boots fitting underneath these guys but notice how the heavy duty 
exterior cordura wraps around and it's going to keep the buckles of your boots from wearing around the inside. And see these two little white dots? They're actually drains. If you go through a puddle or some deep water and any water goes up your pant leg or inside the liner, it's going to be able to make it down. There's no, there's no formal liners to these guys. I mentioned it's a component or modular system, so it's up to you what base layers or heated gear you wear underneath. But from a technical shell perspective, this guy, <coughs> I believe, is going to fall somewhere around $1,000 for jacket and pant combo here for the Latitude, which is going to be a big step up and a more tapered fit than something like the uh, Traverse or something like the Badlands. It really is truly a down-the-middle um, crossover motorcycle and dirt bike oriented set of apparel, where some of the other climb stuff we see is more enduro or dirt bike first, motorcycle second. So if you have any questions about us, shoot us a line at cs at revzilla.com or you can check us out online at blog.revzilla.com, our YouTube page. You know, you could hit any of our different areas for interaction if you want to find out more as the climb stuff starts to be rolled out. Like I said, this is a prototype version. These pockets are not going to be able to be, they're not going to make it to the final cut. This guy is going to be rolled out sometime towards the fall of 2011. As always, we're going to keep you posted, but with all the buzz about the climb stuff these days, we wanted to put this video out and try to get you in touch with what the staple elements and the positioning of this guy is going to be so you can make a better informed decision or if you could just wait it out and if you're going to hang out and pick this guy up when it comes out. I'm Anthony. Thanks for watching RevZilla TV today. Check back often and frequently for more news on the Latitude as well as the Badlands Pro, which are coming out soon. We'll see you next time on RevZilla.com.